Okay, back for segment three. So the third type here is covalent. Well, this is not the third type, actually. This is the second type, third segment. Covalent nomenclature. So in covalent nomenclature, you have two nonmetals. And so that's one of the first things you have to do when you're trying to name something. You really want to look at what you're naming. Is it a metal and a non-metal? Is it a transition metal and a non-metal? Is it um, a metal with a polyatomic ion? So those are, you know, kind of the, uh, what do I want to say? The uh, criteria you're going to look for when you're trying to decide what method you're going to use to name uh, a particular compound. So with covalent nomenclature, there's 10 things you have to know, 10 prefixes. The Greek prefix is for uh, 1 through 10, mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca. So those will indicate the number of moles or the ratio of the um, atoms that are in that particular molecule. So you use the Greek prefixes to indicate the moles of atoms. Do not use mono on the first non-metal and always add IDE ending to the second non-metal. So for, as an example here, or as a few examples, I have PCL3. So phosphorus trichloride, that's it. I just have to name the first non-metal exactly as it is stated. If it's mono, if there's one of them, I don't include mono as a prefix. Here's another example, N2O4. Because it's more than one, I'm going to indicate with the Greek prefix. So di, nitrogen, tetra, oxide. And then here's a really good example of where you would, you know, not use the mono on the first, but you would use the mono on the second. So this is called nitrogen monoxide. And oftentimes, if there's going to be two vowels together, we eliminate one. So you wouldn't want to call this monooxide. It just is too hard to say. Although here, we, we kept two vowels together. It's okay. I could call it tetroxide. That would be okay as well. Or tetraoxide. It, honestly, it's what sounds better, whether or not to remove the vowel. Um, and then this last example that I have here, carbon tetrachloride, CCL4. So this time I'm going from the name to the formula. There's nothing in front of this carbon. That must mean there's one carbon. And now I have tetrachloride, which must mean that there are four chlorides. There's a number of nice practice examples in the worksheet folder um, and also in your problem set. So I would say just you know, practice those. Those are actually the easiest ones to do.